We leave the walled garden and climb the steps to enter the rocky glen. At this point we stop to consider and pray for the world, both its troubles and its many blessings. A reading from the second book of Kings, chapters 23 and 24. The beginning of the exile. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign. He reigned for 11 years in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, just as all his ancestors had done. In his days, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came up. Jehoiakim became his servant for three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. The Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldeans, bands of the Aramaeans, bands of the Moabites and bands of the Ammonites. He sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by his servants the prophets. Surely this came upon Judah at the command of the Lord, to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, for all that he had committed, and also for the innocent blood that he had shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord was not willing to pardon. So Jehoiakim slept with his ancestors. Then his son Jehoiachin succeeded him. The king of Egypt did not come again out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken over all that belonged to the king of Egypt, from the wadi of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Jehoiachin was eighteen years old when he began to reign. He reigned for three months in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his father had done. At that time the servants of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came up to Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to the city while his servants were besieging it. King Jehoiachin of Judah gave himself up to the king of Babylon, himself, his mother, his servants, his officers, and his palace officials. The king of Babylon took him prisoner in the eighth year of his reign. He carried off all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He cut in pieces all the vessels of gold in the temple of the Lord, which King Solomon of Israel had made. All this as the Lord had foretold. He carried away all Jerusalem, all the officials, all the warriors, ten thousand captives, all the artisans and the smiths. No one remained except the poorest people of the land. Our reading reminds us that war and conflict are not new. They are as old as humankind. It is often the result of bad leadership of nations, whether it is greed, personal glory, or simply bad judgment. It reminds us that the, that the mass movement of peoples into exile and slavery is nothing new, but it still goes on today. It also reminds us that the people who suffer most are the poorest in society, those who have no option but to live with the desolation of war and conflict. We fail to learn the lessons of history and continue to inflict suffering on those who can least defend themselves. As we on the Legation Walk stand in the beautiful Leicestershire countryside, and those of you at home or in Nampanton Hall can probably see the beauty of the English countryside. The challenge of war feels distant. Yet, Lord, as we see from the reading in Two Kings, war and conflict have marred your kingdom for too long, causing the abuse of your people and denying them their basic rights. 
even now, during the COVID pandemic. There are about 40 wars affecting countries such as Afghanistan, Yemen, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Sudan, Myanmar, Somalia, Kenya, Iraq, Syria, Libya, and too many other places. On top of that, Lord, there are the wars relating to drugs. With over 10,000 deaths in Mexico in the last year. God, we know you see all of this. The destruction and waste of lives. Especially the loss of lives of innocent people. You also see greed and selfishness of the few. Particularly the leaders blighting the lives of many. Bring peace, healing and wisdom, Lord. And as a response to your love for us, help us to confront all that promotes violence in any form. We lift before you all those affected by war, both those displaced by war and those left behind to restart their lives. Guide all nations, Lord, and give them wisdom to provide compassionate and expedient treatment for refugees, rather than the current system based on suspicion and confinement. Help us to promote an inclusive, just, sustainable and healthy community where we live and work, welcoming all as God's children. Lord, we pray for those left behind in the desolation after war, usually those who are vulnerable due to poverty or disability, unable to escape, just fighting every day to survive in a shell of a country. Hold these people in your arms and let them feel your presence strongly. Empower us in a broken, sick, an unjust world, to promote healing and bring your kingdom here on earth, always welcoming you in our midst. Amen.